Welcome back to the OpenTK Platformer tutorial series. In this part we're going to be loading a texture in from the file and drawing it to the screen. So let's get right back to it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add that texture to our project. We're going to make a folder to put it in. So we're going to right click on our project, select add, new folder. I'm going to name this folder content. Right click on the content, select add, and I'm going to add an existing item. And make sure you select all files in the bottom drop down there. So you can see picture files as well. I'm going to add this tile texture here and once it's added to this folder here we do need to change a couple properties with it so right click on that file there click select properties and it will pop out this property window we're going to change the build action to none and the copy to output directory to copy if newer and this makes it so it doesn't try and compile it it simply copies the file to the output directory and it should be good to go so we can use it on runtime now if we run that and we go check out our bin directory and our bin directory will be in wherever you decided to put your project It'll be under the project names folder, under bin, debug, or if you have it in release mode up here, it could be under release as well. Here's our project here. This is our exe. If you run this, this is exactly what we compiled just a moment ago. And then we have our content folder, and we have the texture inside it. Now what we need to do is actually load that texture and pass it to OpenGL. So how we're going to do that is we're actually going to load it into a bitmap, a system.drawing bitmap and then we're going to lock that bitmap data and pass it over to OpenGL and after that point OpenGL will actually take care of the memory usage there and there's many ways you can set this up I generally like to put the loading function in a separate class called content pipe you can put this function anywhere however I like to put it in a public static function so that I can load anything from any class some people will argue that this isn't the best programming practice however for these tutorials it's easiest to understand and easiest to read in my opinion so I'm going to go over here, right click on my project, select add, class, I'm going to call it content pipe, and we're going to do a couple using statements, we're going to use OpenTK, using OpenTK.Graphics.OpenGL, using System.Drawing, and using System.Drawing.Imaging, and now in our content pipe class we're going to do a public static and we're going to pass it back as an int because the int is going to represent the handler in OpenGL that we use to access the texture once we've passed it over. So we're going to do public static int load texture and we're going to want to ask for a string path. And one using statement that I forgot, we're going to do using system.io as well. Now I added a couple lines just to handle if the file doesn't actually exist. You don't actually need these, I just like having those. Now we're actually going to start loading the file. So first what we want to do is we want to tell OpenGL to create a new texture ID and we're going to save that ID into an integer. So we'll do int ID equals gl dot gen text, gen texture, sorry. And this is the function that tells OpenGL to generate a new texture ID and open up some space for that. Now what we want to do next is we want to actually tell OpenGL that we want to start working on that texture that we just generated. So how we do that is we do gl dot bind texture and we want a texture target dot texture 2d because this is a 2d texture and it wants the id for the texture so we'll pass it that id variable that we just created and now all the gl calls after this point will be targeted at this texture that we just generated now what we want to do is actually load in the bitmap using this bitmap class from system.drawing so we're going to do bitmap and we're going to call it bmp equals new bitmap and we're going to pass it a string path or a string file name. So we're going to do content plus path so that it defaults to the content folder there. And this constructor will automatically load in all the data to this bitmap right here. Now what we want to do is actually tell the bitmap to hold the data in memory while we're working on it. So we're going to do bitmap data make a new variable here. We'll call it data equals bmp.lockbits and it's going to ask for a rectangle, so we're going to do a new rectangle, and we're going to start from 0, 0, and go to bmp.width and bmp.height. It's going to ask for an image lock mode, we're going to do image lock mode dot read only because we're reading the bits. And then a pixel format, we're going to do pixel format dot format 32 bpp argb. Go ahead and close that function there. I'm going to go ahead and make this look just a little nicer. Now we have our data locked in memory, so we want to actually start passing it over to OpenGL. So what we do is we do gl.textimage2d. It's going to ask for texture target. We want to do texture target 2d again. At the level, we're going to put 0. The pixel internal format will do RGBA. 
for the width we will pass it the data dot width and data dot height for the border we'll put zero pixel format here we'll put pixel format dot bgra for the pixel type we'll do pixel type dot unsigned byte and for the end pointer we're going to pass it data dot scan zero now we're almost done but not quite what we need to do now is set a couple properties about this texture in OpenGL since it's still binded from up here we can go ahead and start doing that here so we'll do gl dot text parameter for the texture target we'll do texture target dot texture 2d texture parameter name we'll do texture parameter name dot texture wrap s and for the parameter we're going to typecast it as an int because it's expecting an int and then we'll do texture wrap mode dot clamp we want to also do the same thing for the texture wrap t so we're going to go ahead and copy this line here and instead of texture wrap s we'll do texture wrap t and then there's two more parameters we need to set we're going to do the same thing again gl dot text parameter texture target dot texture 2d texture parameter name dot texture min filter and we're going to typecast again as an int we do texture min filter dot linear and we also want to set the mag filter here so we're going to go ahead and copy this line here and paste it and instead of min here we're going to do mag and min here mag and those should be all the variables that we need to set in this tutorial so now what we're going to do is we're going to pass back that ID we're going to return ID now in order to test this out what we need to do is we need to go back to the game class and we're going to make a variable to hold that ID that we receive. It can be int texture. And in the onload function, we're going to say texture equals content pipe dot load texture. And we're going to pass it tiles dot jpg. That's the name of my file here in the content folder. Now, if we want to actually draw this to the screen, what we need to do first is we need to tell OpenGL that we want textures to be rendered when drawing polygons. So in our constructor, we're going to do gl dot enable. It's going to ask for an enable cap. We're going to do an enable cap dot texture 2D. Now down here, if we want to tell it to actually draw with the texture, before gl dot begin, that's important. We want to do gl dot bind texture. You're not actually able to change texture targets in between gl dot begin and gl dot end. We do texture target dot texture 2D. And for the int texture, we're going to pass it the texture that we loaded in on in the onload function. Now that we've bound that texture, OpenGL will know that this is the texture that we're using to draw these primitives. Now what we need to do is we actually need to define a texture coordinate for each vertice. So before each vertex2 call, we're going to do gl.textCoordinate or textCord2. And we're going to pass it an x and y coordinate. So for this one, we're going to do 0, 0. And these x and y coordinates should be between 0 and 1, 0 being the left, 1 being the right, or 0 being the top, 1 being the bottom. We're going to go ahead and copy this line and paste it after each GL color 3 call. I'll go ahead and space these out to make it a little bit more legible here. So for this one, we're going to do 1, 0. For this one, it's going to be 1, 1. And for this one, it's going to be 0, 1. And then if we go ahead and run this program here, you'll see that we got our texture and it's also still colored. Now this is exactly what we want but there's one more thing I want to do before the end of this tutorial and again this is something that you don't actually have to do but I recommend it. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a struct specifically meant for a texture. All the struct is really gonna contain is an integer ID as well as a little bit of information about that texture. So we're gonna go over here to our project, right click on it, select add, class, I'm going to call this class Texture2D. And since we're almost out of time here, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the code that I have pre-prepared. It's a really simple struct. It just contains an int ID as well as width and height and accessors for those. Back in our game class, we're going to change this texture from an integer to a Texture2D. And now we need to change in our content pipe class. We're going to go over here. Instead of returning an integer, we're going to return a Texture2D. And then down here, we're going to return a new Texture 2D, and that Texture 2D is going to contain that ID we loaded in, as well as the BMP dot width and BMP dot height. And then in our on render frame function, we're going to add dot ID right there after texture. And if we run this, we should get exactly the same thing. And there you are. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hope to see you in the next one.